Boots. One of their favorite destinations is Russia. Here, the girls are tall and thin and have the beauty codes required to become a top model. Jenny Rose and David Cunningham are in charge of scouting and development of IMG models. The agency of Leticia Casta, Mila Jovovic, Heidi Klum or Giselle Bündchen, among others. While other model scouts are just looking for girls ready to work immediately, they try to perceive how a young girl will evolve in the next four or five years to come. In the teenagers facing them, they can already imagine the woman that these girls will become. Tigran Kachetrian is their local contact, an Armenian who speaks both English and Russian fluently. All year long, Tigran organizes precastings in small towns and villages in anticipation of Jenny and David's arrival. On this journey, they will travel from east to west Novosibirsk, Omsk, Perm, Nizhny Novgorod, Voronezh, and finishing in St. Petersburg. We will get to know the next generation of young Russian girls who are the link between the Russia of yesterday and the Russia of tomorrow. Novosibirsk, which translated means New Siberia, is the capital of the region. Founded 112 years ago in this once desolated region to a hub on the Trans-Siberian route. The Trans-Siberian was the tool used by Russians to colonize this region poorly inhabited but rich in hydrocarbons. Today, Novosibirsk counts 2 million inhabitants and dozens of teenagers hoping to be top models. It's in this city that David and Jenny will start their quest. Okay. David's still getting ready. David, we'll meet you down. Marina, one of the girls discovered in this city, has been a model with ING for two years. Native of Novosibirsk, this young model is thrilled to welcome Jenny and David back to her hometown, where a casting has been organized. Yeah, I think so. The natural talent of the girls is astonishing. I mean, the Russian girls are beyond beautiful. They look really different. You're not seeing one type of girl repeatedly. You're seeing, in the same casting, girls that look like they came from ten different countries, but they're not. They're coming from one. So that's already very interesting for us. We can come here and find more girls here than we can going anywhere, anywhere else, else in the world. The ratio of great girls here is just higher than anywhere else. Jenny and David are the only foreigners who travel like this into small towns and villages trying to find tomorrow's new faces. While the other agencies content themselves with a stay in St. Petersburg or Moscow, they travel to faraway locations to meet the girls and their families and establish a relationship. I like her a lot. She's baby though, she's like so yeah, she's great. She's great. The hopefuls are between 14 and 20 years old, and most of them measure between 5 feet 8 and 6 feet tall. All the measurements are taken and their heights are rechecked. For this, they are required to remove their treasured high heels. These heels that are as high as their hopes. Hello. 
Turn them off here. In just a few seconds, with a quick motion, Jenny and David indicate to Tigran their interest. Spasiba, thank you in Russian, means the girl has not been selected. Spasiba, no. Спасибо. Спасибо, Спасибо. The first thing we're looking at, we look at the body type. I mean, when they arrive, you see how they're proportioned physically, where the length of their body is, if it's the legs, the, you know, you see how they're proportioned because they have to fit the clothes, so. And then afterwards, we look at their age, their height. I mean, you know, there were some girls that showed up that were, you know, there's a lot of work to be done. Their, their teeth aren't great, their, there's stuff to be done. But there's something, you see it. You, you feel it, you see it. In Novosibirsk, Yana, 16 years old, has cocked the attention of the scouts. Look here with your eyes. Good. Can you smile? A big smile? Great. Okay. Thank you, Yana. Spasiba. <laughs> Tigran, before she leaves, I want to make sure we have all the paperwork on her. I got Everything. The day's casting has finished. Now the follow up will start. Soon, Yana will begin her career as a model, traveling abroad just as Marina has done before her. The entire team is invited to Marina's home in a small town located 30 miles outside of Novosibirsk. It's here, in this Russian middle class residence, that Marina spent her childhood. Vodka? Mm, mm. It's cake. It's cake. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, so cute. Ah, is this you? Yeah. It's my first picture in modeling. For modeling? Yeah. You look, ten, you look ten years older than you do now. <laughs> okay, let's see the video. Yes. Marina got her start appearing in a music video of a local pop group called Lunatic. The lead singer is now her husband. I think Marina's life is interesting and extraordinary. I'm really happy she has chosen this career. But of course, at first, it was frightening to let her go by herself, far away from me, to another world, especially at 15. But I took this decision and I don't regret it. I was also afraid because you have to be able to tell the right agencies from the wrong ones. But I realize now that this one has a very good team. Marina's parents are very happy that their daughter has chosen this career that allows her to travel all over the world, a dream they had never been able to experience. It wasn't possible, and after it was when the communistic time, it's, it's, it's finished. I told you that it's, all fabric was closed, and it was with money problems. It's not possible to go anywhere. My dream would be to see Paris. See Paris and then die. It's, it's
it's a wonderful thing to see a girl that might not have the opportunity to travel the world, to earn her own money, and to have a lifestyle that obviously her mother never could have, her grandmother never had, her aunts, maybe even the girls she went to school with. It's really nice to be able to help young women do what they want to do in life that they might not have been able to do. And especially if they are beautiful and if they have, you know, if they have a talent and a potential, you know, if they were to stay in these cities, they, they could never do that. You know, the most that they could hope to do, you know, as far as traveling and, I mean, maybe a vacation, maybe. But most, most Russian girls don't do that. I mean, most girls from villages and towns don't have that kind of an opportunity. And I think that the thing that's really wonderful is the families of these girls, they know that, you know. They know that if we, um, if we take a girl and if we make an investment of time and, you know, financial investment, that we want the best for their child. Back on the Trans-Siberia, we leave Novosibirsk and Marina for the next leg of the trip, nine hours and 418 miles. Several minutes after departure, the first dachas appear, little wooden houses painted in green or blue, in which Russians live in during the summer months. Siberia, from the Ural to the Pacific, represents three quarters of the territory of the Russian Federation. Yet, it is inhabited by little more than a quarter of the country's population. The entire route is lined with thousands of birch trees. Their white trunks act as markers indicating the direction west. To the left and to the right, the landscape is flat, flat and flat. We arrive in Umsk, known as one of the greenest cities in Russia. The city is both a cultural and industrial center of the steppe region, built at the junction of the Um and the Irtysh rivers. Umsk is a vibrant city filled with bars and theaters. At the hotel, local journalists are waiting for the team for a press conference. They are curious to know why an international agency would come here every year to search for models. Above her. We're not trying to find any certain kind of girl. We're looking for great girls. If you try to look for what's going on today, what kind of look is happening in fashion, then by the time that these girls are ready in New York or in Paris or London, they're going to be behind. So we just try to find great girls that don't look like anything else, that don't look like anyone else. A face you haven't seen before. Once more, the girls present themselves one after another. It is here that the well-trained eye of a scout can distinguish the girl that has what it will take to go the distance. The disappointed ones live without a word, their hopes gone forever or ready to try it again another time. The next step, the selected girls are filmed by Jenny to see how they appear on camera. Can you smile? <laughs> Great. Okay, walk up here to the wall for this lady. Walk. Now look at me. Okay. 
and no smile look very serious. Great. Then, David spends a little more time interviewing each girl to get their statistics okay. and the sense of the girl's character. Um, when, when is your birthday? When will you be 19? So you're... 13th of November. 13th of November. Okay. You speak English? Uh, yes, I do. Great. Hello. Diana... Pichova. Pichova. <laughs> okay. Diana Piova. Piova. <laughs> H K H O V A. Great. And Marina, are you in school? You're in school. Which grade? Eighteen. Uh, eight. Eighth grade. Okay. Thirteen years old. When will you be fourteen? <laughs> Your birthday? Almost. <laughs> Tigran? Hmm? I need help here. Yeah. Um, we just explained to her that she's very young mm -hmm. for us and that we, we don't take girls that are 13 years old. But that, we thought, but that we thought she was so beautiful that we want to follow her. So, what do you think about modeling? Do you like it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Where would you like to go to travel? In France? Yes. All right. Well, there you have to wait until you're 16. <laughs> but you can come to New York. You can come to New York earlier than that. Um, I mean, uh, Christina, Christina Sakova, I think, has just huge potential. Uh, she's still got to grow up a little bit. She just turned 15 uh, the day before yesterday. So she just had her birthday. So even at her height, she can still do, she can still work and do fine uh, because she's that beautiful. But if she grows another inch or two inches, then she can really be a superstar. I'm taking a lot of pictures of you because I want to show them to some very important clients, okay? So that's why I'm taking many pictures of you. Very good, good job. It is the first morning as future model for Christina, and not much has changed yet. She is joined at breakfast by her mom and older sister. Her dad is a military man stationed at his post in the United Arab Emirates. Of course, I would like to change my life. I like Omsk, but I think there isn't much opportunity here as a model. So I would like to move and see how it is like abroad. University, courses, uh, sometimes a little bit of disco, and then uh, all the same. <laughs> Maybe I'm of the same uh, opinion as Christina, because I also would like to go somewhere abroad and to start something abroad, because here for um, young uh, people there are not a lot of possibilities to start something really important in their life. What will you do when you'll be gone? I'll come and visit. She will become uh, our guest. <laughs> The average monthly income in Russia is the equivalent of 180 US dollars. When a girl becomes an international model, she can expect to earn far, far more. The fees paid to a model depend on the country she would work in and the type of work she will perform. Advertising, editorial, catalog, fashion show or TV commercial.
Back on board for another long journey, 866 miles, which will take some 20 hours. Conceived for daily transport, the Trans-Siberian wagons are very basic, almost unchanged since they were put into use in the last century. The pace of the train is slow, a welcome change in our high-speed world. The time passes between discussion and rest. As we voyage, the landscape changes. The train crosses through swamps that surround the tracks. The countryside, still flat, extends as the step goes from dry brown grass to a tender green. But all of this is almost behind us as the Trans-Siberian enters the Ural. It's here that Boris Pasternak wrote his famous Dr. Jivago while he was a work in a Ural's chemical factory during the First World War. New casting, the girls exchange their sneakers for princess heels and make themselves beautiful in anticipation of their chance. Before the cast, Tigran, IMG's Russian representative, briefs the girls on the business of modeling. What's a model? You are in the modeling business and you don't know what a model is? That surprises me. What's a doctor? What does he do? What does an engineer do? He builds. And what does a model do? She sells. What do we sell? Oneself? Clothes, that's right. So unfortunately, uh, Russian girls cannot think the way, say, the American girls think. Yeah? To them, career is not number one, not yet at least. Once you put the Russian girls on the right track, um, they themselves become obsessed with this business. Um, once they realize the opportunity that lies ahead of them, and they go at that at such a hungry appetite, with such a hungry appetite, that nothing can stop them. They cannot be like normal girls, yeah? They cannot go have fun in these girls. They cannot eat just anything. They have to really strictly watch their diets. It's like being a sports person, you know? Um, they have to sleep early. So basically, they cannot have as much fun as, you know, regular girls at their age. But on the other hand, uh, they're gaining so much money, they're gaining a lot of freedom, and, you know, they're getting education. This is what you get for sacrificing a lot of those things. Um, and I think it's worth it. This is how I see it. Before the casting even begins, 14 years old Lisa catches the eye of Jenny and David. A 5'10 brunette with almond shaped eyes. Her face reflects the influences of her mixed backgrounds Tatars, Turkmen, and Ukrainian, a sublime synthesis of the Russian geography. Her mom come over. Her mom's ten minutes. 
it's the way you work. Can you, can you ask mommy to call her so she can come here? Please, let's do that. Hello. To get to know Lisa and her mother a little bit better, they are invited back to the hotel along with her local agent. In conversation, the teen learns that Lisa has a serious problem, that she is nearly blind in one eye. The right eye, the right eye. So it's this one, yeah. sir? Do we have specialists in New York we can take her to, maybe? Yeah, she yeah. Comes. because you're what she because it's still it healthy. Is, it's, I mean, it's a complicated medical thing, I, I don't know. It's... First, I told Lisa we couldn't really say whether she had talent, whether she would get fulfilled in this career. It's hard to know how a person will behave in public. So I sent her to a modeling school so she could learn how to make up properly. She was also going to classes to learn how to walk elegantly. They taught her how to walk on a catwalk. It's also important for everyday life, because her height attracts people's attention. All this will be helpful for her life and not only to be a model. But she knew. She knew looking at her. Of course she knew. She knew that that's the only thing that is good for her daughter. She cannot be a sportsman, she cannot be anything else. She has a hard time learning at school. Yeah. It's very difficult for her because, because of the of eye. eye. Yeah. No, but you can explain to her mom that when I was filming her, it's even funny because on the tape I said, this is a girl that was born to do this job. She's so patient. I mean, it's like she works with you. Mm. And if, if she's working with me, then she's going to really work with a real photographer. But will Lisa, so young and so reserved, be able to win over the Parisian fashion world as the team imagines? This remains to be seen. The vista has changed. Gone are the birch trees. No more step. Now we see just pine, fir, larch and maple trees. In this tiger forest, dense and full, which covers most of Russia's oral. Again, we change time. In this vast country, with 11 different time zones, Russians prefer to account everything using Moscow time. Okay. In Russia, no matter where you are in Russia, you account the time Moscow plus or minus several hours. So if you are in Novosibirsk, you are Moscow plus four, right? That's how they talk about time. They don't say, okay, we're in Nova Spirisk and today it's four o'clock. They say, we're in Nova Spirisk and it's Moscow plus four. So people who've never been to Moscow are counting time. I mean, it would be like if you were in, you know, Los Angeles and you were in New York, you know. Minus three. Minus three. All the time. <laughs> it, it's just a concept and, and everybody talks that way. You know, so you'll say, so like, what time are we meeting? And they'll say, um, Moscow time. Yeah, 7.30 Moscow time. <laughs> you're like, and you're okay. a curve. <laughs> <It's like laughs> and you're meeting people that have maybe been to Moscow once. Or maybe never. <laughs> or maybe never. Fourth stop, Nizhny Novgorod, Russia's third largest city. Founded in the 13th century, it was for a long time the commercial heart of the empire thanks to its privileged location on the Volga. During the Soviet period, from 1930 to 1991, the city was close to foreigners, since it was the strategic center of the industrial military complex. But times have changed. Every bride from this region must be photographed at the Kremlin to immortalize her wedding day. It is a very strong tradition here. 
В данном случае у меня. Шапочку подождите, папа. Досок в нижнем, автоклуб. Внимание! Katrina, 16 years old, has spent six hours riding the bus to come and see Jenny and David. But today, she will not need to cast. For the first time, she's here as an international model. At the beginning, it's difficult, because you have to get used to an unknown language. But what helps is to trust yourself. It's, uh, hold on. Yelena has it in, oh no, Dima. Dima. Do you have the books? Because um, Katrina, Katrina's card has her cover on it and she hasn't seen it. Happy? You have to show your mom. It's the cover. I can hardly recognize you. You have already changed so much. That's cool. You're gorgeous. I think this casting is very important for girl because uh, all girl uh, dreams about this, about trip. Paris, New York, London, Milan. It's very important. It was your dream too? Yeah, of course. It my dream was too. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elena. How old is she? Scouted by Tigrin several months earlier, she has already modeled in Paris. Katrina was booked exclusively for Louis Vuitton, an incredible start to a career. Okay. They like that com camaraderie between each other. You, you're always going to see, you know, backstage at a show, you'll see the Brazilian girls, the Polish girls. The, they like it because the thing is, is there's not a lot of them. I mean, that's what girls find once they, they begin to model is that they start to have more in common with each other than they do with somebody they went to high school with at home. Because when you're 16 years old and you spent the summer in Paris and you spent two months in New York in the winter, what are you going to talk about with your, you know, best friend from Nizhny Novgorod? You know, you might not have a shared experience. Again? Okay, you have to take your shoes off because you're too tall for me. <laughs> <coughs> you're so tall. <laughs> to go. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Try one more time. Maybe Olga, who is here today, will follow on Katrina footsteps. But for one girl will make it, how many of them will never succeed? I like this girl too. Did you film her? Yeah. She has beautiful skin, beautiful teeth, beautiful There's hair. like nothing wrong. No, no, nothing is wrong. <laughs> nothing special for me. No, I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong. I think if you see her in pictures, you're gonna be like, wow. I hope I'm wrong. She has no personality. She's very she reserved. You know, she it's doesn't like speak a word of English. She's not ready no, to go anywhere. So they're now. not ready yet, but I mean, I like the she, other group. She grew up great. She grew like up beautiful. Xenia, is really beautiful. Dasha, Natalia. You know what? The thing is, it's like her upper body is bigger than her lower body, but her lower body's small. She's 85. No, but her shoulders. It's it's, it's all through here. Is tiny. I think she's going to have a really hard time fitting clothes. You think so? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about her. Uh, not ready. We, she has to come to, I know, really I'm sorry, the girl is baby. I agree with she you. She has to she's come to St. Petersburg. She's not even ready for Japan. I'm telling you, she was weeping in St. Petersburg. She was weeping during the photo shoot. And so she's, beautiful, now. I want my mommy, I want my mommy, you know. Well, you know, then she needs time. She's yeah, I mean, There's she's no hurry. Ready.
David and Jenny have stopped counting all the hours spent aboard since Novosibirsk. They do not know anymore if it's the morning or the evening, if it's time to sleep or time to eat. Voronezh is located 340 miles south of Moscow. As soon as we arrive, we go directly to the place of the casting, an imposing monument which is a former Soviet cultural house. For the past 17 years, it has become a school of modeling for 80 students aged 5 to 20. I would like her to do this job so we could travel in different countries, but I would like her to be a high-level top model, not an average one. I want her to have good results, because it's a very prestigious job at the moment. She has to beat all the records. I want to be a star, so I can be seen on TV and travel all around the world. For instance, to France, to Paris. <laughs> Along with runway classes, the students also receive classical and modern dance lessons, which is really the most important part of the training. Girls enroll in this school not only to fulfill their dreams, to become models, but also to learn proper posture and movement. The school managed by Mrs. Komareva is a gold mine of talent. Thanks to this program, the selection and training can begin early on, as was the case for Tatiana. Julia, 15 years old, was also a student here. Jenny and David met her on a previous visit to the city, but she was still too young. Since then, she has made tremendous progress with her English, and she will soon model internationally with the agency. I've grown up so much since the last time I saw you. Unbelievable. <laughs> I, still have those films. I, have, I still have those films. I'll show you one day. <laughs> okay, just turn your profile again, okay? You 
like to do this job. I can tell. Okay, great. Every time we're here, we always have a great trip because we do come back with so many girls, so many leads on girls, so many girls that we say, okay, we'll see you next year when we come back. And you know, there's the faces that we're ready to work with in, in two weeks time, and there's the faces we're ready to work with in two years time. And that's, that's really our job. It's our job, it's Tigran's job to, to, to keep following up on these girls, keep their interest until they're ready, age-wise, to do this job. You know, it's a hard, it's a, it's a long process. You know, you're seeing some girls that are 14 that are fabulous. In two years, they're going to be 16, they're going to be ready to work. And in their heads, they're going to be different because we followed them for two years, because they know they're going. They know in two years, they're going to travel, they're going to go to Paris, they're going to go to New York, they're going to... You know, it's something for them to look forward to. I think it's going to be Paris, Just a few moments before the team departs for the station, a young girl sent by another Warren Age agency arrives at the hotel. Captivated, Janie casts her in front of the hotel entrance. Age 13, Tanya displays a naive self-confidence. I want you to walk like a model, okay? And I want you very strong, 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 and then you look here when you turn. Like before, like before. Oh. You walk. You walk, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what would you? Yeah. Why do you want to become a mother? Mm. Because I'm very tall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very pretty. I'm very pretty. I want to be a model. Because I'm beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> You think so? You're confident of your beauty? You Yes, of course. Back on the train one final time. Direction St. Petersburg, the far west point of the Russian Federation and of the end of the Trans-Siberian Railway. The country's cultural capital is a city that was built from nothing 300 years ago by the desire of the Tsar Peter the Great. The Nevsky's Prospect, the Bridges of the Neva, St. Isaac's Cathedral are some of the many gorgeous architectural wonders colored blue, green or light pink. The last casting in St. Petersburg. Girls come from all over Russia to take part. But the scouts don't find among them that diamond they were hoping to meet. How are you? How tall are you now? Later on at the hotel, Tigran has a surprise for them, a video of his favorite, a young girl who comes from Belarusia, who he has been following since she was 11 years old, and for whom he has organized a special meeting. No. Her, her look is totally new. I mean, it really is. I mean, to find a six foot tall platinum blonde, you know, it's something else, it's something new. This face is a face you haven't seen before, which is exactly what we're always looking for. There's nothing repetitive in the face. There's many girls on the market who are, you know, indicative of another girl, another face. They this fit is, in with a group. This is all new. 
Jenny seems captivated. Oh. <laughs> 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 so since she was 11, we uh, kept an eye on her, and then about one year later, we brought her to St. Petersburg, and she, since she was 12, we started working on her, primarily, uh, you know, with the psychology, we tried to align it with the Western mentality, this is very important, because most East European girls, not only the Russians, but generally East European girls, uh, they have very different thinking because the culture has been very isolated from the rest of the world and uh, the way they think, the way they talk, the way they move their entire life philosophy is very different from the West so if you don't do this training chances for a girl to come out of Russia and become a successful top model is like winning a lottery Going abroad to start a career as a model is an inaccessible dream for many young girls but for some to dream does come true. Early October in Paris. Not even a few months have gone by since we got back from Russia. And we are already meeting some familiar faces here in Paris. Among the girls met during the agency's trip on board the Trans-Siberian, six of them were chosen during the summer to make the cover of Chalus magazine. In this magazine issue, we can find Christina from Omsk, Lisa from Perm, Julia from Voronezh, as Tatiana, or Tanya, and the other Tanya. This one, blonde. This magazine somewhat gathers this year's journey. It's the excitement of the spring and summer collections, and Lisa Galsova is already going to the castings by herself. The agency coaching is already bearing results. She, yesterday so shy, seems today to have gotten out of her shell. She's even lucky enough to participate in the fashion show of Isai Miyake, the famous Japanese designer. But the sensation of the moment, the one who's making an astonishing debut and is multiplying her appearances on the catwalks, the one whose name is on everyone's lips, is Tanya Giagineva, whom we met right at the end of the journey. Who knew that this season was going to go blonde? Tanya shows up at the right time, platinum blonde hair down to her waist. It, it couldn't have been better. He couldn't have asked for anything, a perfect setup. And she walked in and took the space that was there for her. When people hear about you know being discovered and having your big, big breakthrough, people assume that it's always like this, and it really isn't. I mean, this is a fairy tale. She 
she is the year's Cinderella. Let us wish her the best so that the fairy tale may continue for at least a few more seasons. She's coming.